Hey everybody, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can organize all of your sublimation templates in Corel Draw so they're very easy to find anytime you need them. Now, I'm using Corel Draw X8, but any modern version like X6 or X7 should work as well. So, the first thing we're going to do is create a new document, and we'll just use these default settings 8.5 by 11. And the first way we can do this is we can open up one of our sublimation templates. We'll choose this iPhone, open up that template, we'll copy that, and we'll paste it there in our document. We'll make that stroke a little bit darker, and we'll press P just to center it there in the center of the page. And once we have this set on the page where you want it, we can go to File, Save as Template, and then we can just name that, which is DFX. 0025W and then we can also say it's iPhone 6 plus that way we can look at it by product number or by the type of phone it goes with we can also down here add a tag we could say iPhone 6 plus there we could also add a subject like sublimation and then we can just save it here in our templates and you can fill in all this information if you want to, or just press OK. Now we'll close that document. Now we can when we go to File, New from Template, we can go to My Templates, and we can choose that template that we just created. And you can do that for each of your covers, or each of your sublimatable products. And that way you have all of your templates inside Corel Draw anytime you need them. But let me show you another way that may work better for some of y'all. I don't want to save that. All right. So what we're going to do this time is we're going to create a new document just like before. We'll leave it on 8.5 by 11. Say OK. So come up to File, Open. Click on our desktop. We'll click on this iPhone 6. We'll open that document. Select it. Make a copy. Close that document. And we want to paste that in. I'm going to change the stroke to one point. Now what I want to do is come into Window, Dockers, and open the Symbol Manager. Or you can press Control F3 on your keyboard to open it. Now what we want to do is right click on the object. Come down to Symbol, New Symbol. And we'll name that. And we'll name it DFX0022W iPhone 6 and we'll click OK and you'll see it added that to our symbols over here. Now that we've added that we can delete it. We can open our next one, File, Open and we'll go to this iPhone 6 Plus, open that, copy it, close that document, paste it into this document, change the stroke to one point. You don't have to do that but I always do it just so it shows up a little better. And again, we'll right click on it, go down to Symbol, New Symbol, and we'll name that one DFX0025W iPhone 6 Plus. And we'll say OK. And you'll see it added that one here to our list. And we can go ahead and delete that one. And we can just keep opening and adding more iPhone covers. If you have different templates for different iPhone covers, then we can just keep adding those different shaped templates here. Some of the covers use the same plates and some of them don't. So we can just add all the different shapes for the iPhone covers in here. And then whenever you get all of your covers added, you just come over here to File, Save as Template. And this time we're just going to save this as iPhone templates and again you could save a template for all your iPhone covers you could do a separate template for iPhone 5, iPhone 6 and then when the iPhone 7's come out you could do a new template for the iPhone 7's so we'll just call this one iPhone 6 templates and we'll just save that say OK and now we can just quit that now we'll come over here and we'll say new from template 
click on my templates and you'll see iPhone 6 templates right here we'll just double click and open up a new copy and then you'll see all of your iPhone 6 covers will be here in the list and whichever one your customer orders you can just pull it out drop it on it's already to size so you don't have to worry about sizing it because because it's still the same size as the original template that you brought in you don't have to worry about resizing it or anything but you'll notice you have these little blue handles which means that it's still a symbol so after you drag this on all you got to do is just right click it revert to object and then that way it's an independent object and then you can color it or whatever you want to do to it if you leave it as a symbol you can't just change the color you have to like actually right click on it and go to edit symbol and then select it then you can change your color and then right click on it finish editing and then it'll change the color but it also changes the color for any other new iPhone covers you bring in to this document now if you open up a new document from the template again you'll see that they're reset back to the original. So whatever color changes you make only affect that one document. But to me, it's just better to go ahead and just, once you bring it in, just right click on it and then say revert to object. And that way it breaks the link and it doesn't change all these to that color. Because if, you, if they're still linked and you go back to edit symbol and you change the color again, then whatever symbols are still linked over here, it's gonna change all of those to blue. So then since that one was still linked, it changed both of those to blue. So like I said, once you bring it in, just go ahead and right click on it, revert to object, and that way you can just edit it as normal and not have to worry about trying to edit it as a symbol. There are times where you will wanna leave it objects linked, like if you're doing something that uses repeating graphics or something, you may wanna leave them linked together so when you change the color on one, it changes the color on all of them. But on something like this, you wanna go ahead and break the link so you don't change the color on every one of them if you're doing more than one cover or more than one design for a customer. So then we could obviously do another new document and we could do another template for um, iPads or for a Galaxy phone, we could bring that one in, copy that, close that, paste that into our new document here. Again, I'm going to make that one point. Right click it, come down here to symbol, new symbol. One other way you can do this is you can select the object, come up here to object, down to symbol, and the new symbol from there. But to me, it's easier just to right click and choose symbol from there because I don't have to go all the way up to the menu. So this one we can name it DFX0040W Galaxy S6 Edge and we can save that and again we can save all of our Galaxy templates here as symbols in the list here. We can delete that once we've, once we've created a symbol we can go ahead and delete that. And once you save all your templates in here as symbols, again, you can come up to File, Save as Template, and then just name that Galaxy S6 Templates, and then save it. And when you have one of those phones to do, you can just say File, New from Template, My Templates, there's your Galaxy ones, there's your iPhone ones. You can make one of these for iPads. You can make one for auto accessories. You can make one with all of your mugs in there. You can make another one with pet product templates or whatever kind of templates you want to group together so that they're all in one place. Now that you got all your iPhone templates saved in a templates file, let's say your supplier comes out with the iPhone 7 cover and you want to add those to your iPhone templates. What we can do is go to File, New from Template, and we'll open up our iPhone templates here. We'll just open up a copy of that. And you'll see over here on the right, there's your iPhone 6 covers in there. Now what we can do is go and open the template for the iPhone 7 covers. And I made a fake one up just to do this demonstration. So 
This is not a real iPhone 7 cover, it's just a fake one I made up. But we can click on desktop and we'll go down here to iPhone 7 fake template. We'll open that up, import that in, we'll just copy this, close that, paste that into our document. And again, this is not a real iPhone 7 plate template. It's just a fake one I made up for this demonstration. So after we paste that into our document, I always like to change it to a one point stroke. We'll right click that, symbol, new symbol. We'll name it iPhone 7 plus fall. That way we'll know it's the fake one. Say okay. Now you can see it's added here to our symbols palette. And this one here on the page, we can go ahead and delete that. So now what you want to do is come up to File, Save as Template, and you'll see it says Untitled here. And what we want to do is just replace this one with the new file with all the new templates. So what you're going to do is just click on this name, and you'll see that it's going to rename your new file the same name. So now when we click Save, it's going to say iPhone template.cdt already exists. Do you want to replace it? Just say yes. Click OK. And now we'll close this template. Now when we go back to File, New from Template, and we open that iPhone templates again, now you'll see all of your new iPhone covers we just added are in this new file that we just saved. And you can do that anytime you get some new templates. And just one more thing I want to show you. If you do banners or core class signs or anything like that, you can create a template for each size of banner or core class sign or whatever that you do. So let's say you want to create a template for a banner that's 72 inches wide. 36 inches tall and with the printer that I use I have a Roland printer I like to create everything in RGB and let the rip convert it to CMYK so I'm gonna go ahead and click OK there there's our banner 72 by 36 and if you print digital banners like we do uh, we can go ahead and set up the grommets so that the little grommet holes will print and that way it's just easier to put the grommets in because it shows you exactly where to put them. So, so I'm going to go to Tools, Border and Grommet. And if you have CorelDRAW X8, this is like a free plugin that you can get if you go to the welcome screen. Come down here to get more here. Go to Extensions. Come down here. There's a Border and Grommet free extension you can download and it'll install it into CorelDRAW for you. There's a few other ones here. This is one that converts all of your text and objects to curves. There's some on here that you have to buy, but these are free ones here. So you just click that and it'll install it for you. So again, I'm gonna go to Tools, Border, Grommet. It'll show you the height and width of your page. I'm gonna say Add a Border. I want a one inch border all the way around because we do one inch hems. So that'll give me a one inch bleed that I can fold over. And I'm gonna say add grommets. And I'm gonna say 0.5 for the size. And I'm gonna say 0.25 for the margin. And I'm gonna say spacing. Since this is a six foot banner, I want the spacing to be about 20 inches for the grommets. I'm going to place grommets across the top and I'm going to place them across the bottom. I'm not going to add any here on the sides because normally we just put them across the top and the bottom unless the customer specifically asks. So then I'm going to click OK. And what that's going to do, it's going to add an inch to my board all the way around. It's going to place my grommets where I want them. So let's blow this up a little bit. You can see now my document's 38 inches instead of 36. So it created an inch of bleed and it created an inch of bleed this way. And it put my grommet centered at one and a half inches. So once this part is folded behind, this grommet will go right in the middle of a one inch area. 
so it'll go through the front and then this will be folded to the back so it'll go through both thicknesses of the banner material. All right, so once we get that the way we want it, we've got the grommets where we want it, we got the bleed area and everything. You can go ahead and set some guides so that you'll know where your live area is. You can just put those there, we're like two inches in. And that way you'll know all of your text and all of your photos or anything you don't want to maybe get a grommet stuck in it or get folded over or whatever. You'll know that this is your live area to keep everything inside this area. And this is like your bleed area. So if you're doing like a full bleed photograph, it can bleed off the edges. But all the critical part of the photograph needs to stay, you know, inside this border. So once you get all this set up the way you want it, you can come up here to File save as template and we'll just save that as 36 by 72 banner save it and we can close that and now we can come over here and say new from template we can click on our 36 by 72 banner right here open and it brings it up with our grommets and all of our guides already in place and everything so that's going to save you you know 10 15 minutes just getting that all set up so i guess that's about it for now i hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new if you have a question or comment please leave it in the comment section below if you like this video and would like to see more please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel thanks again for watching and we'll see you later